Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, vent, vent, yeah, because I'm, I'm going to be live on Facebook. We'll, we'll connect her up with that next time around. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, all right. I'm going to put everybody on mute on the conference call. And um, then we're going to get ready to start recording here in a second. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, everyone. Amen. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition. Um, I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. I'm coming to you this morning from down in Montgomery, Alabama. We're uh, on a little excursion uh, visiting one of our daughters in college and just coming down to see about her. Um, but let's get into our lesson. Um, before we get into our lesson, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We give you all the glory, give you all the honor, and we give you all the praise. You're so worthy, Lord, of all of the glory. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together this day and to come together over these this technology of Facebook and conference calls. We plead your blood over it right now, Lord. Not only do we plead the blood over this technology, Lord, but we plead the blood over every household connected in and every household is going to listen to this word at another time. We just ask you to bless, Lord. There's power, wonderful working power in your precious blood. Have your way in their lives. Have your way in all of our lives. Bless us, keep us, and put a hedge of protection around us. We thank you for this, Lord. Whatever we stand in need of, we know that you can supply and that you will supply. So, Lord, just have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Um, today we're going to look at a very familiar passage of Scripture. Um, matter of fact, it is considered probably uh, one of the most beloved in all of Scripture. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. As I said, it's probably one of the best known in, in all of Scripture. Everyone knows Psalms 23. Uh, as a child myself, I, I I learned it early on as a child. Uh, my mom would read it to me, and I would enjoy having her read, read it to me. And then one day, I actually learned how to read it myself. And by then, I could recite it pretty good without even having to read it. Uh, beautiful song written by... David, uh, let's read this Psalm, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. That's, that's Psalm 23. And this psalm, this psalm, um, as we're looking at it, doing this, this lesson, this, this period of, of Sunday school, we're looking at it from a standpoint of the shepherd loving us. 
the, the, the love of the shepherd because we're, we're concentrating in, in this, this quarter on dealing with love. And when David, when the King David, the, when he wrote this song, he, 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 he wrote it and, and he used those first five words, the Lord is my shepherd. If we think about that, we, we just put that, uh, touch each one of our fingers for each one of those words. The Lord is my shepherd. Every time we look at our hands, we could think about and realize that we have a God who loves us so much that he would be our shepherd. He would lead us. He would guide us. He would protect us. He would provide for us. That's who we serve. That is our, our, our the one who loves us. The great, great and good shepherd. And so in this lesson, in this lesson, the key verse is that first verse. The Lord is my shepherd. That's the key verse because everything else in in in, in the in the, uh, the 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 rest of the song just tells us how the Lord is our shepherd. Oh hallelujah! He's our shepherd, and the first thing he says is, "I shall not want." Oh hallelujah! And so when we look at this, our God, the God. That, 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 that is our God that we believe in, that we trust in, that we depend on, is, is a shepherd to his people. He cares for us. He provides for us. And he makes sure that we have everything we need. Now, the keys for kids today is simple. The Lord watches over us and protects us. The, 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 that's the key concept. And when we get into the keys for kids, it's God cares for us. God gives us everything we need to live. And God blesses and provides for his people. Now, for those that have want to be, you know, I, I call it my deep people, my, my folks who want to get deep and dig deep into the word and get all of the nuggets out. We're going to review the, the role of the shepherd as a guide, as a protector, and as a provider. And then we're going to explain how the, the, the psalm imagery uh, brings comfort and goodness and mercy to those who trust in the Lord. And then we're going to look at God for, for, for uh, help us after we get through with this lesson to trust God to protect us. And provide for us physically and spiritually. So let's look at the first two verses. I'm going to read them now out of a New Living Translation. Just, just to break, up, break them up a little bit. Listen to it. He says, the Lord is my shepherd in the New Living Translation. I shall have all, I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows and he leads me beside peaceful streams. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like it when they read that, when they change that thing. Say, I have all I need. Yes, I have all I need. He leads me uh, resting in green meadows. He, he leads me beside peaceful streams. This, this, this gives us this, this imagery of, 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 of the shepherd knowing that, that he's going to take care of his sheep. And he's going to make sure that, that they have a great place to rest. And when they rest, they're going to make sure that they, they, they can rest in peace. Now, we must understand something about, about sheep, 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 sheep. Were, were, were animals that were easily startled. They they get shaken quickly and and and, and so they they don't have great defense mechanisms. They they can't protect themselves. When 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 the lions and tigers and bears and the wolves and all of that come out. 
out to them, if they don't have a shepherd, they will be quickly devoured. But the shepherd makes sure he leads them to a place where they don't have to be anxious about anything or anybody. He puts them in green meadows, meaning that he puts them in a place where they, they can have what they need to eat because they typically eat grass. And then he makes sure that, that they, they have water to drink so he doesn't lead them by rushing water and turbulent water, water with a whole bunch of confusion, but he leads them to some still water, trickling streams, peaceful streams that they can receive the nourishment that they need. Oh, hallelujah. I, 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 gotta, I gotta talk about this from the standpoint of God and the spiritual needs of his children. He puts us in place where there's a great word that we can sit and chew on and eat on. And he puts us in places that we can receive that word without a bunch of confusion. <laughs> oh, I'm talking to somebody right now. And the reason he does that, he wants us to be nourished and he wants us to, to have confidence and blessed assurance in him. He wants us to have peace. Oh, hallelujah. So he leads us and he guides us. Now, remember what I said now. Now, now I'm talking about verse two, but, but, but remember verse one says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's going to satisfy my every need. And I have a basic need to eat. I have a basic need to eat physical food. I have a basic need to eat spiritual food. I have a basic need to be able to do that in an environment where I feel comfortable and I'm at rest and I'm not anxious and scared. Because if you eat in that kind of environment, your stomach gets all messed up physically. But spiritually, he wants us to have that same kind of environment. And why does he do this? Why, why does he do this? He does this because he knows this is what his sheep needs. Next, he says, not only does he satisfy the sheep, he comforts them. Look at verses 3 and 4. I'm going to read out the King James Version, because we're familiar with it from the King James Version before I read it out of New Living Translation. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The New Living Translation reads it this way. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths and brings honor to his name. Even when I'm walking through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That's just so good. He, he restores us. And he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. What, 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 what is this saying? This, this, is, this is saying that, 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 that whatever we're going through, he'll be there. Just like the sheep when 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 they when they when they get off on the wrong paths and the, the shepherd goes by and he restores them. Shepherd I me, mean, sheep have a, a, a an ability to, to, to be 
at each other. We, we call that, they be bumping heads with each other. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know how we bump heads with one another and one sheep uh, get mad at another sheep and, and, and then boom, bump and knock that one over. And the shepherd comes by and he breaks up the situation and he calms both of the sheep down. And he restores them to comfort and peace. Well, that same way he restores those sheep in the physical shepherd and sheep world, God restores us. We've all fallen short of his glory. We've all sinned and fallen short and he, he restores us. He forgives us. He, he, and then after he forgives us, he, he leads us in the path of righteousness. 1 John 1, 9 says it real good that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And the reason he does this is, is not because of our righteousness. He doesn't do this because we're good people, but he does it because he loves us. And he does it because of his own name's sake. Oh, hallelujah. I love that. I, I've always loved that. His name's sake. It's just something about his name's sake. When he does it for his name's sake. I don't, I don't have to go through all kind of gyrations wondering whether or not that I'm going to get blessed by God or wonder whether or not he's going to keep me or whether or not I'm going to fall out of his grace. I don't have to worry about any of that because it is for his name's sake. I'm one of his children. My name is on him. I mean, yeah, his name is on me. And I know even myself as a father, I want to take care of my children. I, I, they, they got my last name. They McCoy. So I want them to act a certain way. I want to be, I'm going to make sure they have what they stand in the need of for my name's sake. For my name's sake. Today's society, people don't, 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 don't uh, uphold folks' names like they did back in the old days. But, 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 but God, God said this, this, this is for his name's sake. That he's going to protect us and restore us and keep us. Even when we fall. Oh, hallelujah. And then verse four says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. This, 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 this scripture is used often uh, at funerals and in the passing of, of family members and friends. This, this passage of scriptures is often used as a, as a word of comfort to those that, that even if we're in this, this, this valley of the shadow of death, we won't fear any evil because his rod and his staff is there. It's, 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 a, it's a word of comfort. It's a, it's a word of assurance. It's, it's a word that God is going to be there with us every step of the way. Now, for the sheep, they had times where they were, were walking through the valleys and, and the shepherd is leading them through the valleys. And, and, and when they led them through the valleys, it, it might be the, that the mountains covered up the sun. And here it is in the middle of the day. And it seems like it's at midnight, even in the middle of the day, because the mountains have covered up the sky. The, the cloud the, and the mountains and the clouds have covered up the sun and, and, and the shepherd now going, wait a minute, it ain't nighttime because at nighttime they get scared because predators are coming after them and, and, and all of that is going on around them. But they see the shepherd. They see his rod and they see his staff. And they'd have seen his rod and his staff had worked before. 
When wolves come, he throws his rods at them, hit them across the head, and they take off screaming. When the bears come, he takes his staff and he defends them, defends himself and the sheep with his staff. They've seen the rod and the staff as a weapon of defense. And then not only have they seen it as a weapon of defense, they've also seen the rod and the staff as a weapon of discipline. And so when the sheep get out of line, the shepherd would throw that rod in front of them I mean, and boom, and it hit the ground and they'll run back knowing that the shepherd would say, no, 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 you're getting out of line. Then in other times, they get caught in the thickets and, and when they're caught in the thickets, the shepherd... The, the shepherd comes by and, 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 and when the shepherd comes by, when the shepherd, this call is being recorded. when the shepherd comes by, he looks down in the thicket with that rat, with that staff that's hooked over their heads and around their neck and he pulls them up out of the thicket. Oh, they have witnessed this. They have experienced this. They, they know it happens that this rod and this staff can take care of them. Now let's bring this to us as Jesus' sheep. We didn't been through many valleys together. We didn't experience not only the shadow of death, We've experienced death of our loved ones. And we know how bad the grieving period has been. But yet and still in the midst of our grief, we've learned that Jesus is there as a comforter and as a keeper. Matter of fact, he's also used us when others are going through their difficult times. We've sat at others' bedsides and held their hands and watched them go home to be with the Lord. We've been with other family and friends and, and we've comforted them in the midst of their thing. Whatever they're going through, we've been there with them. That's, that's the same here. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou, O Lord, are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff will protect me and comfort me. You will find a way, Lord. You're close beside me. That's the imagery that we ought to grab a hold to when we think of that psalm and this valley situations that we're going through. Now the last part of the lesson, verses five and six, Jesus has shown us, or David, excuse me, has shown us how the good shepherd in this text satisfies us and comforts us. And now he wants to show us how he will host us. I, I I live in a house where my wife is one of the best hostesses. They, we call it, she's the hostess for the mostest. She 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 tries to 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 welcome you into the home and make you feel comfortable and, and have everything that you need. And 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 I see her at times as an imagery of of, of how God is going to host us in heaven one day. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to the text. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here, the, the imagery changes to the shepherd being a host with the intimate relationship with God 
and his people, uh, we, 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 we are hosted by him and we are his guest. God is a gracious and marvelous protector and, and he keeps us as his guest away from all enemies. In the ancient world, it was customary to protect your enemies at all costs. So when a man is coming around and he's being pursued by enemies, it was your job to give him refuge. The owner of the tent was obligated to protect his guest from the enemy. The shepherd protects his sheep just like that. And even if there was some sheep that came from another fold, he would protect them and he would prepare them a meal. This imagery of, of preparing a table in the presence of my enemy. I don't know about you, but you've been in environments where people didn't like you. People hated you. And yet, and still, God has blessed you even in the midst of all of that. That's God, our good shepherd, preparing a table for us. Even in the presence of our enemies. And I love the imagery of anointing our heads with oil and our cup running over. Back in the day when I was a young child, my aunt, I, I always remember Aunt Sister Baby, she lived across the street from us and she used to drink coffee in the morning and, and she would always drink her coffee out of a nice china cup with a nice uh, 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 china plate under it. And, 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 and I was a youngster and, you know, the coffee would be hot and she would pour her coffee and put her cream and her sugar and then she would make sure a little bit spilled over to the on on the side of the of the cup that it would fall in the saucer so when it was cooled off she said you want some and I would sip off of that coffee uh plate <laughs> coffee cup plate because it was running over and every time I hear this he anointed my hair with all and my cup runneth over. I think about how, how, how overflowing God's blessings are to us. And, 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 and he just, we, we, we could just sip off the side and it would be more than enough. But, but not only does he give us a sip, he gives us an overflow of blessings. One blessing after another blessing after another blessing. Oh, hallelujah. Such a loving and gracious host. He gives pure satisfaction and security to his guest. He makes our cup overflow. This imagery, this imagery provides us with, 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 with the knowing and understanding the great and marvelous nature of God. He is our shield. He is our protector. Our enemies have to stand outside the tent. They can't do anything to us. He will not allow it. He, he will destroy them for us. And their plans will be frustrated. Where God makes our plans work to his glory and his honor. He prepares a feast. Oh, hallelujah. And then he says something that always, I just, ooh, I just love this. I just love this. I can't help it, y'all. He says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell, I will live in the house of the Lord forever. That's, that's, that's what the good shepherd has prepared for us. I could hear Jesus saying, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. We, we, we have a good shepherd. And his name is Jesus. And he told us over in John chapter 10, my sheep hear my voice and no other will they follow. My father who has given them to me. I have lost none and, and they can't be snatched out of my father's hands. He tells us that, yes, there are thieves out there who come to steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, I come. That they and we that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. He is the good shepherd, and he will take care of us. And we have blessed assurance that Jesus is ours. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchased of us. We're washed in his spirit and purchased in his blood. Oh, this is my story. This is my song, and I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed assurance. And you got goodness and mercy following you all the days of your life. You'll know for sure that you're protected and in the household of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Let me bring this lesson to a close. Give you some things to ponder. God is the provider for all of our physical and spiritual needs. Regardless of life circumstances, we can take comfort in knowing that our God is always with us. God protects us, provides for us, and blesses us even when our enemies are present. And God's goodness, finally, and mercy is truly a blessing. And it's there following us, around us for the rest of our lives. So we have to go all the way back to the top of this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's it. He takes care of me. Oh, hallelujah. He loves me. And he takes care of you. And he loves you. And he gives us everything we stand in the need of. And we can always trust him. That he will take care of us and provide for us because that's what a good shepherd does. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, refresh our lives with your spirit as we gladly walk in the path of righteousness you have established. Let us realize that those paths lead us to enter your presence and dwell with you forever. We pray this in the name of the Good Shepherd, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. Thought to remember the shepherd is trustworthy and faithful. Before I end the broadcast on Facebook and on the conference call, I always like to give those who are listening an opportunity to give your life to Christ. 
And so we pray the prayer of salvation. The prayer of salvation is based on Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10, and verses uh, uh, 10, 13. Let us, let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer and truly believe in your heart, you are now saved. And we encourage you to go find your Bible-believing, Bible-teaching group of people and fellowship with them. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to go into overtime here on Facebook on the conference call. So Lord, we have discussions and we talk about the word that has just been preached and then even pray for one another and fellowship. So we're getting ready to go over there on, on Facebook. If you want to join us, the overtime number for the conference call is 910-218-0531. So on Facebook, we say to you, be blessed until next time.